Hey everyone, Dr. Frunke here with a review and final diagnosis on this pocket flashlight. This is the JetBeam Jet 2 Pro Ti. Now it is an awful name for a great light. I find that so many flashlights just have these awful just numbers and names and eh, they're just terrible. But in any case, this little light caught my eye on a mass drop uh, where it, they show the pictures of these four different lights, each with uh, unique uh, titanium sort of characteristics. So they had a plain titanium, and they had a black wash titanium, and then they had these two colored ones. Now, I originally bought this uh, blue and purple one. Uh, this one was to pair with my 0392 Purple Black Warncliffe. I didn't keep that knife for very long because I didn't like the DLC and I didn't like the Warncliffe edge there or tip on that one. So I moved that one along. It paired well with my blue Hinderer um, XM18 Fatty Warncliffe uh, and then it also paired well with the Curtis Nano that I borrowed from my friend. But right now it's sort of, uh, it doesn't have a partner, uh, so that's okay. I ordered this based on some pictures, the prototypes showed that it was a little bit more green and uh, being that it was purple and green I thought I could also bring it to uh, use with my green Curtis F3 which I'm just going to show off in this beautiful sunlight right now. Uh, but the light came in a bit more blue than I originally anticipated and so I ended up getting the green one here from my buddy Nico because he picked it up on the same deal and he was generous to send this my way uh, at cost so I liked that a lot. Let's go ahead and talk about these lights anatomically. At the very front, or I'll call it the head for now, uh, we've got the most unique and characterizing feature of this light and the reason that I really purchased this thing. And This is what catches everyone's eye. This is what makes this light interesting and that is the strike bezel. Now they have a standard Jet 2 uh, Pro and it's got a, a black aluminum body and a stainless steel bezel uh, so it does look a little bit more uh, a tacky. This one sort of not not tacky, but a tacky, or as Shabazz might call it, murdery, in that sense. But this uh, looks a bit more playful. It almost looks like it's a, a, a the king in like an all titanium chess set or something like that. It's or the queen. It's it's really cool. I, I like the way it looks, and it doesn't look quite as threatening as maybe the all black with the silver bezel does. But uh, just a, a quick close up on it to show you the real detail that went into the milling and production of that bezel right there. It's incredible. It's done in titanium and then it's finished on both sides with the same anodization as the body and they matched it very well. Now if this is too threatening to you, you can take it off. They uh, send this light with a just a simple circular uh, bezel as well, but this thing will screw on in the opposite direction and then just lock in place and it does match up with the bodywork pretty nicely uh, and it just makes it a little bit less threatening if you need this light to not have a bezel for whatever reason or be less threatening whatever it'll do that and it just gives you something to play with now this is something that I routinely have to be conscious of this doesn't really snap or lock in place and every now and then I'll re reach down to feel it and I'll recognize that the bezel is a little loose. So it's definitely something to uh, pay attention to if you do end up buying this knife. Uh, light, excuse me. <laughs> I do so many knife videos that it's just a reflex now to say that behind the camera. Moving back to the functional part of the light here, we've got a Cree XPL High LED going on here. Uh, sitting inside of a orange peel reflector diffuser thing. Uh, with what looks like a polycarbonate or a plexiglass sort of lens going on there. Uh, going to have a good amount of transmission coming through that. The light uh, is very, very, very bright. The maximum mode is logged as 510 lumens. Medium is 100 and then uh, low is 5. So that's 500, 105. So really bright. 510 lumens there. For whatever reason, the light quality on this seems so much more powerful than the claimed numbers. I have a lot of lights that I like in this size. You've probably seen my videos on all of the Olight S1s that I have. Now this light is also supposed to be right at about 500 lumens, but for whatever reason, the quality and the power on these jet beams, is, it just seems so much more intense. Maybe it's the way the light is focused because uh, it doesn't have the sort of 
TIR diffuser that the Olight does. I, I don't really know how to explain it, but it's very piercing and very strong. And it does have a, a very nice cool white nature to it. I prefer the cool white color uh, on my lights instead of the natural white, the sort of warmer white, because it gives a more true coloration of things uh, and it's helpful in the medical field as well. I like to have a high output light because if I'm in, say, the emergency room and I'm assessing a patient, uh, there are going to be a lot of bright fluorescent lights and so uh, their pupils may not react the same uh, and I need a light that's even more powerful than the overhead lights to really uh, check for reactivity. So I do appreciate having a really bright light there. Uh, it will run for 0.7 hours at 500 lumens. At 100 it will run for 1.5 and at 5 lumens it will run for 15 hours. There is a moonlight mode if you double tap you get uh, 0 0.5 lumens that will run for 150 hours. It's pretty, pretty. It's really pretty nice. It's a, it's a great beam quality. It is, a, it throws really far. It has a claim to 138 meters. You know, I don't really test that. Most of my lighting is like at three feet, so uh, I don't really need a, a big distance. But if you want a small light that's got an extremely powerful beam, uh, in this size, it's just perfect. It's really, really nice. Now. Uh, they say that it comes in at 43 grams, so I'm going to go ahead and bring in the old scale here. I usually have trouble getting it to show numbers for whatever reason on the camera. There we go, I can do that. Let's, uh, let's tear it here, get it to zero, and we can find out exactly how much this weighs. With the battery, it's 2.3 ounces, so that's really not too bad. Uh, that's a very light light right there. It's a little English experiment for you, a light light. Okay, so uh, it's really not any bigger than the Olight S1s. It's coming in right at just over two inches in length. Uh, so a nice compact package right here uh, for 500 lumens. It runs on a CR123A battery or a 16340. Um, I think I've got an RCR123 in there. Uh, oh, it's so bright. <laughs> And uh, it's really, really nice. So, you know, the battery life is forever on these things. I only use it in short spurts, you know, maybe a few seconds here or there, and I haven't had to replace the batteries yet or even recharge the rechargeable one. Let's take a look at the bodywork and just appreciate in high resolution the wonderful milling work and anodization work that they've done here. Really, really nice milling, very, very high attention to detail. Everything is meticulously done, uniformly done. There don't appear to be any errors in the milling. Uh, it's very, very nice. Um, underneath there, you can see it says Personal Defense Jetbeam Pro 2, yeah, Jet 2 Pro. It's just really, really nice milling. Uh, incredible attention to detail. Even on this tail cap where they've done some sort of unnecessary milling just for show. It's got four different positions for the potential lanyard. It is a nice uh, screw off cap here. I keep turning it on. <laughs> the, everything is made to really tight tolerances. Check out the anodization going on inside of there. Uh, very, very simple uh, construction here. We've got IPX8 waterproof uh, certification. So it will go underwater a little bit for you. You can use it in the rain. Um, one of the issues I have with this is the pocket clip. I appreciate a good pocket clip. I will say that functionally, this pocket clip is excellent. I'll say that it fails in two small ways. Number one, I don't really appreciate this ribbing going on here. Honestly, it's just more uncomfortable than anything else. Um, I don't think it adds to the functionality of it and it's unnecessary. Um, I don't really like how it's fixed to the uh, light like this. Um, I just feel like that might fail at some point, and then when you're unscrewing it, you kind of have to hold the thing in place or else it's wobbling all around. So that's a little bit annoying. I just wish that it stayed in place. I really, really like the solution that Olight had with their clips. But I, all, I do appreciate the sort of tip-down carry that's going on here uh, because it keeps that bezel away from you know, poking your hands or anything like that. It doesn't reposition either, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, what is my final diagnosis on the Jetbeam Jet 2 Pro Ti? This is an amazing little light. I am so impressed with the quality, the attention to detail, the manufacturing, the anodizing, the colors, 
and the solidity of this thing. It's light, but it's powerful. I really like it. Click like and subscribe. I enjoy doing these videos. Let me know if you want to see more flashlights, guys. As always, this is Dr. Frunky saying take care.